Good morning. It is Wednesday the 8th, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So, this is a development. I've been keeping it kind of a secret from you guys. Um, this has been going on about the last month. I have traded one of my crickets, the 72. So he had asked me if I would sell him one, and I politely declined. You know, I'm, I'm a horny bastard like that. Um, he's like, okay, you know, you know, I, I appreciate that. So about a month or so goes by, and he says, hey, I found this car. Would you be interested in a trade? And just so happens the car he found is my number one dream car. I have three. So the one car. I won't mention it yet. I want to wait until I meet the guy and then I'll show you guys the car. Number two would be my DeSoto, or a DeSoto like that with the big fins. Uh, number three would be a 61 to 63 Rambler American two door, preferably not a convertible, and probably not a hardtop. I'd probably rather have a sedan. And you know, that's it. I'm done. Other than buying for a quick flip, I'm done buying project cars for myself unless it's one of those three so i'm like uh yeah yeah that sounds like i could do that let's you know see what happens so back and forth trading pictures you know tell them what it is the car is in okay looking at the pictures there's two of them actually and they're incredibly rare they're not worth anything but they're incredibly rare and so the cars are both in awful condition uh look like they both had decent interior, or at least decent, especially it didn't sit in 40 years, you know, but um, the car I'm getting, the interior is not bad. You know, dash is cracked, you know, the carpet and floorboards are smoked, they're just completely history. The driver's seat has a split in the, well, they don't have bolsters, but you know, where your hip hits it, and from the pictures, that's it. The seats are good, the headliner's good, the door panels are good, everything's good. And so there's, you know, again, a lot of rot in the front floorboards. The rear floorboards actually look good. It's sitting down in the sand. There's no front suspension at all. No struts, no control arms. I think the cross member and maybe even the rack are missing. I've got all that. I've been spending the last two weeks getting all the parts prepared because I, I could have just put them all together, you know, and threw everything in a pile and had it, but I can't just do that. Especially like on the struts, I don't want to pull that stuff back apart. So I've been sanding and cleaning and painting and making everything look pretty good. So, you know, I got the rack painted the blue color that they were. I've got the cross member painted black and the control arms painted black. Gloss and semi-gloss. Correct colors. Struts are painted. I had some wheel paint that was given to me by a friend of mine that was moving away. So they're like a metallic gray or metal flake gray almost. They kind of look okay. They look cool. And the springs, I was hoping for some kind of metallic red, but I didn't have any, so I sprayed them copper coated them so one does like a splash of color so you know anyway I've got them all well they're under that carpet there so they don't get chipped up I've got my pinto wheels he bought a set of row styles for his for the car the 72 there on the trailer anyway so we're supposed to meet in Tennessee uh, which is halfway point He's in Virginia, the cars were in Virginia, or in Tennessee. The car is, the paint has pretty well peeled off of it. It looks a lot like the Patina Cricket. You know, there's not a lot of paint left on it. The other car is a dark metallic green and it looks nice in the pictures, but the whole bottom of it is gone. Like, one of them is rusted out from sitting on the sand. The other one's rusted out from being driven in salt. Completely different damage. So that car, the engine was complete in it. Tranny, obviously complete. They're both automatic cars. The car I'm getting, the head is off the engine and laying to the side. And 
so it's it's junk. It's fine. It's going to end up getting maybe a Pinto Courier, whatever, 2.3 Lima uh, with the, I got an A4 LD out of a Ranger, so it would be a nice cruiser, and it'll have okay power. But, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I'm driving right now. I'm about a half hour late. We're driving to, to Jackson, Tennessee. We're going to jack the car up on his trailer, put the front end underneath it, put the wheels and tires on it, and then roll it off his trailer, drive this one off this trailer, drive it up onto his trailer, and, you know, away we go. When I was loading it up on the trailer, the exhaust was hanging down, and it was held together literally with Coke plastic cans wrapped around the pipe and then radiator hose clamp the whole thing back together. And so when I went up on the trailer, it caught where the exhaust was sagging, pulled it out, which made it drop down, get caught on the wood, and then just stuck it all up above the axle and bent it all up. So now there's no exhaust on the 72, which is fine. It needed to be replaced anyway, but you know, we'll see. So I guess that's about it. You're gonna hit the road. I am topped off on fuel. The cricket I had I washed it last night, just blew all the crap off from underneath the uh, hood and just you know all the leaves and stuff blew them all. So yeah, we're ready to go. So I will check in with you guys on the next update, probably in about 400 miles or so, and we'll see. Until then. Hello people, this is Thursday morning. I am in Jackson, Tennessee. I'm here with the gentleman. Carpet or underlay? That is felt, sir. Or no, no, that's carpet you get at Home Depot. It's like a cheap deck carpet. <laughs> so here we are, we are trading off cricket number three for another vehicle that I have kept you in the dark on. So for a quick recap, let's take a look at this. So as I said, this gentleman contacted me and wanted to buy a Cricut. I didn't have one for sale at the time. And then he later got back to me and said, hey, I found another car. I'd like to trade you for a Cricut. So Cricut number three, 72. This one's in the best shape out of all of them. And this is what he found. So I don't think I've made mention of it before, but my number one dream car is a cricket wagon. So it's nothing glamorous, it's nothing fancy, it's nothing cool. It's not a super rare KR500 Mustang or, you know, a Mad Max Interceptor Falcon or a Corvette or a Camaro or anything like that. It's a Plymouth cricket wagon. Ever since I found out that they made cricket wagons, I've wanted them. To the point that if I found a really nice one, I would have traded my cricket that I've had for, you know, ever. This one is obviously not really nice. It's not very nice. It's not nice. It's not, it's horrible. <laughs> Let's just be honest, it's horrible. But it's buildable. I mean, at the very worst, if I had to drill out every spot weld in this car and put the whole rear section on like that 71 with the caved in quarter panels, I could do it. I got my work cut out for me. This thing has been sitting 30 plus years in a junkyard. There's actually two of them there. This one is the nice one. As you can see, we got old Bondo damage. We got fresher damage. We got a lot of damage. I think this is from the forklift. So this is the spare tire rack. That is what's left of the gas tank. It looks like a fork went right through it. I got my work cut out for me. Rust wise, not horrible looking on the body. The rockers are horrible. Bottom corners of the doors are shot. This door's got significant damage. And I actually don't have a good driver door. But look at the interior. It's still pliable, it's not crispy. Look at the seats. Look at this thing. Look at the headliner. Now this seat here obviously has issues, but it's mostly there. And I'm not gonna be running the front seats anyway. how bad 
have that rod is, but the frame rails actually look fine at a glance. I haven't looked at them very closely. The rear floors are fine. Dashboard's terrible, but not so terrible I couldn't put a piece of carpet on it. So, one of the questions that y'all might be having, will it run? Sure, someday. There's no piston in that bore. There's no oil pan on it. There's a cylinder head. I can't get the back hatch open. It's locked, I don't have keys. But look at that. Can you see that? That is a twin carb setup. Yay. So, 1972 Plymouth Cricket Wagon Phantom Mist Metallic. And this color, I hated it, but it's actually growing on me because now I can see the color where it's not faded. And I like it. Where it's faded, I don't like the silver. Of course, this right here isn't a factory anyway. But yeah, these fenders are shot. They're rusty, which can be fixed. But you got a bunch of filler right here. You've got some damage back here, damage to the door. You've got this damage here, which is fairly easy to fix, but you got all this damage down here that's hard to fix. You've got crease there. That won't be too hard to fix. I haven't decided on the driver door yet, because the only other door I've got I can take off the other 71 is the one off of my 71, the green car, that's just full of Bono. You got this, that won't be too hard to fix but it's got a pretty good wrinkle there. That's gonna be harder to fix. Got a dent here. Tail lights, this one's not great. It's not broken, it's mostly intact. This one here has got the top corner broken off of it, but I've got a friend of mine in England who is sending me a set of lenses. Thank you very much, sir. I won't name you unless you want me to. I need to get this hatch open, but I think it's stuck because of all that damage. Block and gas cap. Interesting. No key, obviously. And a dent there. A little bit of rust there. Some rust there. Bottoms of the doors. I don't like any more body damage, though. So you get to the fender, then you got here. That looks like it can be fixed pretty easily. Little dings there. This is original paint. Some rust. Oh, not too bad. The hood is actually really straight, except over there with the hinges, because this hinge was sticking and it's been worked so much, I probably saved the hood. But there's no rust here. That is the jack bracket. That I'm gonna take off because it's just ugly, out of place. There's the little clip. Alrighty. And if you guys are wondering what that is, that's the other half of the air cleaner for the dual carb setup. Got a radiator in it. I don't know how good it is. Maybe it's good. Battery tray is shot. Yeah, there's hardly anything on this engine I wanna keep. Maybe the fuel pump. Maybe the timing cover, because they like to rot out there where the hoses are, but that one looks like it may already be there. So look at that, there's a plastic, right, plastic fan again. <clears throat> Power booster, I'm sure is junk. Alrighty, so we need to get busy. I'm gonna remove all these loose parts. I need to get the front end up in the air and get the new front end underneath it. Uh, it is time to get busy. So uh, the gentleman that I'm working with here has declined to be on camera, which is fine. And uh, I'll be back with you here when we get some wheels underneath it. Alrighty. Cricket number three is loaded up. It's in the hands of the new owner. Well, I don't know what we're going to call this one. Wagon. Loaded up. Ooh, I'm beat. That's a lot of work. We got the front end all on there. We don't have the steering shaft for the rack, so steering wheels are hooked up, which is fine because we don't have a freaking 
key for it anyway. Got my new suspension all up underneath there. As you can see, the engine is toast. Timing cover, I thought about saving, but it is toast as you So, yeah. Man, this is gonna be so cool. Good morning. <clears throat> This is Friday morning uh, on the trip here to get the cricket wagon. Uh, I took a slight detour um, to go see a buddy of mine. Uh, if you guys watch the roach sting videos, my buddy Matt moved from Washington to Arkansas about a year before we moved to Kansas. So he, he has this business here. He's partners with this business. So, um, we're going to stop by and say hi. Things are going okay other than the bus is dying. We have dropped a cylinder. I don't know if it's an injector, if it's an injector harness. It's not a compression issue. It's not a mechanical issue. It's something else. If it were a gas engine, I'd say it needs a plug or a plug wire. But it's not a gas engine. I know the glow plugs were bad, but I don't think that's the problem now so we're running on seven cylinders and fighting compression in the eighth and it's made for this thing being really gutless sucking fuel like you wouldn't believe and we're still five hours from home so i am going to say hi to my buddy here and we're going to get back on the road and head back to oklahoma kansas and then we get to unload the cricket. Let's go check out the cricket. Hello, this is Saturday. So we got in last night. Stopped by the car wash. Kind of blew it off a bit. I went down the frame rail to blow all the um, the sand and mud that was in there out. That way when I'm working on it, it's not falling in my face. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize was with the lack of floorboards, it blew all that mud up the frame rail and into the inside of the car. So when I looked at it last night, when I got home, everything splattered in mud. Let me show you here. Yeah, the mud all over. So it came up the frame rail here and then just blew all out of there. Found a key. I tried my other cricket keys and none of them work. And this one, I don't know which car it went to, but it doesn't seem to be working. Ah, got the hood latch, unfortunately. Tried to get it open and snapped the hood release off. They always snap off know where the other half went so i gotta figure out how to get the hood open not that it's all that important but let's look the car over i've got another project i need to go pick up oh, let me put. In about 10 minutes okay so we got rust we got rust and spades here and the stitching is coming apart on the seats i'm not actually going to use these seats i don't think but I'm gonna save them anyway. Oh man. What are those? Those are ants. Those are foreign ants. Uh, yeah. So we got some rust in the pinch weld. Got some rust there. That can probably be taken care of pretty easily though. This, well, you know, since I was planning on swapping out, this car I've decided is going to get dropped onto the Celica rather than. Rather than a patina cricket, I'm gonna put this one on a Celica. So, none of this is gonna matter. Looking at over there, and I can even look here. See, it looks like the inner rocker, or I think, I think you English call them sills. See, we call these sills. This is the door sill. This is the inner rocker. It looks solid so I could probably just cut it right along there replace the outer rocket rocker and sill and 
drop it on there. I've already measured the inner rocker to inner rocker and the silica is identical to this. So yeah, you see all that. So this car rusted out from sitting under trees. The other car, the cedar green car, rusted out from being driven in salt. So it was just junk. Yeah, you see all that. All that will go away. Anyhow, when I replace the outer rocker, then you see it's got some damage to it pretty well. So the back half of this car really isn't bad. See, there's no rust in those pinch welds. And surface rust there. Nothing deep. A little bit right there. A little bit right there. This damage is pretty bad. This behind the bumper, you can't really see it, especially with the sun coming in. It's pushed in pretty good, and I think that's got the door pinched. But that latch is really rusty. So the bottoms of the doors and the corners are gonna need some work. This one's coming apart. And the crease, I think I've gone ahead and decided, uh, I'm going to try to fix this door anyway, just because you know the doors are impossible to find and the driver's doors are always screwed up. But this one, the hinge is bad, the door is bad. I'm gonna to try to straighten it out, but I'm gonna go ahead and steal the driver door off of the patina cricket and put it on this. Fender, eh, I may as well take the fender off of it too. No, yeah, but that one was still good. Or it's gonna come off of that one. This fender, I think I'm gonna keep it on the car. I'm just gonna fix it. Same thing with the door. We'll probably yank the door off of that car rather than the patina car. Back door, I'm just gonna have to fix. Uh, same thing on this side. Pinch welds look solid. A little bit in the lower corner. A little bit there. Rockers, about the same. Except it's crushed, probably from the forklift. Before they loaded it, this time, probably when they first got it. This inner sill isn't as bad, although it does have some rust. This door won't open, but I'll work on that. This is pretty bad, this pinch weld right there. Uh, but I can fix that, it's okay. Let's see, frame, frame rail here is eight away. The jacking box edge is eight away, but the jacking box itself is actually pretty solid. And then the inner rockers are solid, at least there. Everything back here though seems pretty solid, so I'm willing to bet it's, it's okay. Now this stuff needs to stay cricket to be mated with the Toyota, so it's all good. This is what's left of the gas tank, which it looks like the fork went right through it. Unfortunately, they are exclusive to the wagons, so I have to figure something else out. Uh, there is a bullet hole in the diff cover. I thought somebody did it on the trip, but I went back through the pictures and you can see the hole was already there. Okay, you know, some rust on the fender. It looks like it'd be pretty easy to fix. So at a glance, the frame rails looked okay and I was enthusiastic about fixing it. But, let me flip the camera around to show you here. And the frame rail, as you can see right there, it's history, it's gone. See, it's all ate up. It's not... I mean, it can be patched. I mean, hell, honestly, um, I can order both chassis legs, I guess they call them in England, frame rails. I can order these cells. I can order door skins. Um, I can order almost everything for this car to patch everything. I can get new fenders, but the prices for the parts, I actually get a pretty good discount on it being a member of ASOC, but even with the discount, the shipping costs. I mean, I'd spend five grand just on the parts for this thing, and I, I don't have that kind of money. I don't have 500. I mean, I might be able to scrape up 500, but, uh, you know, so buying those parts, I, I, that's just not really a, a doable process, prospect for me. You can see up here, actually looks surprisingly solid. The problem is the bolt holes for the cross member are so rusted, like on the other side, it's way worse. The insert, the nut insert, is just gone. <sighs> the Stay Puff Marshmallow van, my 96 Ford E450 shuttle bus, 
work truck camper extraordinaire. This truck has basically given its life to get us moved out here, two trips across the country and back, and then this trip to Tennessee and back. I have put almost 8,000 miles on this bus over the course of the summer here. And as you might have heard, I've got it warming up. It's missing really bad. Compression seems to be good. I think it's an ejector problem or ejector harness problem, but either way, I don't have anywhere near the kind of money to fix it. And me trying to get down in here, trying to get down under the dashboard into that doghouse to work on it, no way, I can't do it. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is I don't have the money for an ejector. I don't have the money for the labor. If it's an ejector harness, I still don't think I can do it. You know, everything's packed in to that doghouse so tight. You have to pull the turbo and all the piping and everything to get to the injector harnesses. If it was a pickup, it'd be a lot easier. However, right after I got done filming yesterday, um, it smoothed out and started running like it was supposed to. And it's done that a couple times on the trip where I'd just be sitting there idling and it would smooth out and it would run good. And then as soon as I put a load on it, you know, it would, it would start to go, like you pull on an on-ramp and it would have power and it would be going and then da -da 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 -da, that cylinder would just cut out and, you know, you'd be back to what you were. I am going to try putting a filter on it first. Um, you know, a 7.3 guru, guru friend of mine told me to dump a quart of um, two-stroke um, TCW3 in the tank, uh, do not use ATF. So, you know, we'll try that. I, I ran out of fuel in Utah on the second trip and I didn't change the filters afterwards, so maybe, you know. It doesn't have any blow-by, it's not smoking, it's not using oil, so I don't think it's hurt anything. Uh, but yeah, you know, so we'll see. Either way, I'd like to sell the bus running good. That way somebody can use it and I can get, you know, most of my money back out of it. It'd be a lot harder to sell a bus running like crap because other people don't want to put a bunch of money into it anyway. But the bus is going up for sale after this. So as far as the Cricket goes, like I said before, I'm going to do the Celica swap on it. I may or may not use the Celica drivetrain because I really want to swap to an automatic. You know, I'm getting be in pretty bad shape and standards. I mean, it's not like, <clears throat> it's not like in Washington state where you're stuck in traffic and you're first gear, second gear, stop, first gear, second gear, stop, first gear, second gear, stop, foot on the damn clutch pedal all the time. Here, you know, once you're in gear, you know, you're just driving, 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 driving. Shifting gears is not a big deal, but still having an automatic is going to take me, cause I don't plan on ever getting rid of the wagon. You know, I plan on having it for my daily. You know, it'll be great. So, that will be something to think about. You know, the Celica engine doesn't run right. It doesn't run bad. It just doesn't run right. Good. Especially when it's cold. It runs like crap when it's cold. So, I don't know. I still want to do the 2.3 A4LD swap. That will give me my top end freeway speed. That will give me automatic. And I can go fuel injection with the the 2.3. I've got a Ranger fuel injection set up for it. But right now, I need to go out there and get it off the back of the trailer. Get it in the driveway where it's going. Last night, I went and picked up the other project. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a will it run on that. And uh, we'll talk about that um, in the next video. That I need to do a bunch of stuff to today as well. I've got to pull some parts off of it anyway. So that is the conclusion of this video. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Keep your eyes open for that. Should be out Friday. This one's obviously late, but, you know, it's just a nice little surprise. Take care. Be safe. See you later.